And welcome back inside Brunch 107.7 Music for Life. It's currently one minute after 11 o'clock. I shall be going to the movies. Well, a young man who is going to um, tell you some stuff that's going to make his years look as though he started this thing at age two. <laughs> his name is Michael Rochford. Michael, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us inside Brunch. Yeah. All right, I can barely hear you. If you can get and speak up a little bit into that microphone yeah. for me. Is this good? But, uh, yes, that's right, good. Cool. That's good. How did you get involved in the business of filmmaking? I'm curious. Give me a backdrop, for instance. How, you know, what brought this about for you personally? And then we get to Pendulum, which is what we're here to discuss this morning. Um, well, you know, personally, uh, just generally, like uh, small growing up as a child and whatnot, just generally very creative. Uh, my brother and I used to watch a lot of TV and, you know, cartoons and we would run around and, you know, play and, and, and just kind of, we, we didn't know it at the time. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but we were making stories now. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of just slowly evolved and, you know, I did, um, uh, I was always into like animation and stuff and it just kept evolving and evolving and he's like, okay, you know, I really like um, movies and I would really like to, to, to tell stories and just to be creative like that is a lot of fun mm -hmm. for me. Um, so, you know, I, I went into it and, and I just didn't stop. How many times did you suspended you from school? You obviously were dreaming. <laughs> 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 How many times were you suspended from school? <laughs> well, uh, not suspended, but um, definitely, <laughs> definitely accused of gazing around class and... Hmm. And, you know, drawing too much. Right, right. Yeah, drawing too much, and I should be... <laughs> and that drawing moved from just the paper on to digital. Uh, tell me what kind of what kind of exposure you had exposure you had to that to prepare you for this, your first film. Um, uh, exposure in terms of um, just the, like... Work digital, or? working with the, with the digital equipment, the technology, and so on. Um, well, uh, it, it started off where, um, like, my aunt, you know, had brought her camera, and, um, you know, we just started mess around with it. And, and, and that was really my first exposure to actually filming anything. Mm, um, mm. It was around, I think, somewhere between 8 and 12, somewhere there. And we would just make, you know, a whole bunch of home movies. And, and, and just, just ha you know, at the time, not thinking anything big, just having fun running around and, you know, playing and, and filming it. And, and, you know, gradually, it would, you know, want to shoot more stuff and I would you know I got a little older and I was in high school and I would still want to be shooting stuff and mm -hmm. and you know the so, experience behind the camera yeah so that's my Michael Rochford is our guest here this morning and what we hear I want to try to get, get the, the, the set up story on you uh, he's not telling us too much about his childhood but we'll work on that <laughs> <laughs> didn't get much on that so let us let us get to pendulum all Pendulum right. is what we want to talk about. Uh, right. This is um, t part of the 2015 World Premier TNT uh, Film Festival, um, 17th September. Thursday is when it's going to be released, am I correct? Tell That's us correct. about Pendulum. It is set in Trinidad. How many writers contributed to this script, to put in the, making this happen? Well, in total, we had um, three writers. Um, you know, so a lot of us would kind of mess around ideas mm -hmm. and, you know, I, well, the initial uh, screenplay and the concept and everything I came up with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had people pitching in here and there and, and whoever got time because you know, it was very difficult with time for a lot of people too. So, um, y you know, we'd have people pitching here and there and, 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 and it continually grows and I really kept with it and kept working on it, working on it, working on it until we had something, you know, within the, the margins of, you know, trying to do school and stuff. We did our mm -hmm. best to, you know to make something. Talk to me about the concept good. because you have this software manufacturer who suddenly realizes he's being stalked and he takes yeah. an army man and he says, hey, you know, come work this with me. Tell our <laughs> listeners about, don't, don't give, of course, you know, you, you're savvy sufficient not to give away the plot, but I mean, the, the end of anything, but give us a, a, a later foundation of this. Uh, and, and, and what brought about the concept? Um, well, uh, the concept uh, is basically um, you have a guy who has served in the military, mm -hmm. a Trinidadian, and he came back to Trinidad. He's, he's, he always wanted to be a journalist. And his old friend, who's the CEO of the technologies company, calls him and says, hey, did somebody's you know, maliciously stalking my, my company, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, I need your help, you know, because I don't want to make a big scene. So, you know, the, 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 the guy goes to investigate and, and, you know, he starts to realize that things are not exactly what they seem. And he's accused of a murder of the very CEO, but mm -hmm. the, the, the cool thing about the movie is you have a character who does not know whether he did it or not because of his mental illness. Yeah, that's, that's the magic of movie making, yeah. Shaman. And, uh, yeah. Um, I, Michael, he's, he says you look young. How old are you? Can I ask? <laughs> I just turned 23 in July. That's, that puts everything into yeah. a different perspective. And, and, and what's your brother's name? Uh, oh, that's Rennie. 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 Rushford. Oh. And, right, Rennie Rushford, his brother, is with him. And how old is Rennie? 
20. 25. So 25. the three other friends, you all have been basically growing up together, staring out the classroom mm-hmm. windows. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's because I wanted to get a timeline in terms of your talent and, uh-huh. and that you're doing this at the age of 20 yes. years. And this is, this is, yeah, this is an action movie, really. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, it is an action movie. So how, what is there in Trinidad that, because a lot of our listeners would, would kind of be like, okay, at 23 is doing an action movie. I am sure of the caliber of what we would see produced in Hollywood in terms of your storyline and all of that, yeah? How how were you able to do it in Trinidad? What 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 is there in, in Trinidad that gave you that that push into film to, to this successful extent? We know we have the TNT Film Festival, that's where it's going to be aired and that's where you have an opportunity to to showcase your work. But before the TNT Film Festival. Um well I mean what really kinda inspired it is like how I explain to people is oftentimes you feel like you don't really have a choice mm. because you're just so motivated to do it. And, and you know, you, you're seeing, you know, you'd be thinking up, you know, cool stuff in your head, like what could happen here? And they're like, me and my brother would be like just chatting and be like, hey, you know, be cool. This would be cool. That would be cool. And, you know, you just can't get it out of your head. So, you mm-hmm. know, I, I always I wanted to say for me personally, it was just about, you know, I want to see if I could do this. I mean, let me let me let me give it the 100. And because I really thought that I, I you know, I, I had something that, that would have amounted to something okay, you know. And, um, yeah, it, 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 that was the push really to, to keep, you know, persevering and, 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 and trying to do something good. And, well, as for the scope of the of the movie, as for what it is, I know it's a lot kind of unorthodox, like to say you want to try to make an action thing kind of in the style of all these big movies. Um, you know, it was just um, from a perspective of, well, of course, the story and the characters first, but then wanting to see um, something put on the screen um, that would kind of emulate, um, kind of like the combination of all the things that I kind of consumed growing up. I mean, not to say that that's the only thing I could do, but, you know, that's just how it, how it came about, mm-hmm. really. And I was like, you know, it'd be cool. I think we could do something fun and exciting. You were nominated uh, for um, uh, in the feature film uh, fiction category, right. and, and, and that is really a, a good thing. I do want to know, however, how long it took uh, from concept to um, to completion, how costly it was, and how difficult was the journey getting finances to get involved in doing this? At 23 years old. <laughs> At 23 years old. Important, yes. Well, um, okay. well, the finances, we didn't really get time to, to reach out to the finances, so we had to really just rely on UE. Mm. And um, the little bit of uh, funding that UE gives you, they give you a little, a little something just to, you know, just to kind of put food on the set mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know mm-hmm, what I mean so mm-hmm. um so yeah I mean I reached out to sponsors and stuff but you know I'm again I'm, I'm young and I don't have a whole lot going on out there so I have to really try to kick down the door and we just didn't have the time um, my team and I to to to, to really push and, and try to get the sponsors but now that the film is finished for like the premiere and stuff like that we're mm-hmm. trying to see what support we could get for you know you know, just one or two things in the premiere. To, to it is going to stuff. debut this Thursday at Movie Town. Yeah, uh, just that our folks know that. How much of outsourcing of this project was done, if any at all, and technologically are uh, all the pieces in place in Trinidad to make this movie? In other words, I'm asking if we have all the cameras and the editing, ca- uh, digital right. uh, mastering and so on. Is that something available here or did you have to outsource anything? I know we have the raw talent of the actors, that's clear. Yeah, 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 that is, I mean, that's, that, that you basically said it there. The only outsourcing was really calling up my buddy and saying, help, mm, <laughs> you know? Mm. Um, but the equipment and stuff, I mean, we, we just really, I think we do a magic trick to fool everybody because if you see what we worked with, oh, uh, we, we really tried our best to make it look expensive. Um, um, as for equipment, it was just what the university had. They do have, they have some good stuff. I don't mm. think I'm wrong, but um, by the comparison of you know, like maybe other film schools in, in other countries in the world with real high tech big stuff. I mean, our cameras are these cameras in the studio right now. Actually. And that's why it's such a compliment to you that you Thank take you. what you had with you, and you're director. I mean, so you had to make sure you get all the backdrops. I mean, I looked at the, the Bible, Cecil B. DeMille's classic, and he um, actually had the red scene of pool of water. <laughs> 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 depends on, it just depends on how, how well you manipulate things. Yeah. All right. How optimistic are, are you about getting distribution outside of Trinidad and Tobago for this film? Um, well, right now, uh, you know, I'm chatting with um, uh, my people who, you know, and, and, and uh, one video has helped me a lot. She has a lot of experience in this kind of thing. She worked on films like Home Again, Candice Layla. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's kind of advising, you know, me and, and my team and whatnot, you know, things we could do, festivals, we could go abroad, 
you know little opportunities that we could discuss you know so it's something that we we will de- we definitely th- um moving towards um we also have plans to do online distribution because mm. that's the lovely thing about the internet now yes you know we, we have plans of video on demand and a whole bunch of stuff like that but uh, you know for now really it's just we just trying to wrap it up and, and reach to the premiere safe. <laughs> right, but they're 25, yeah. you know, that's why I say it's such an achievement to you. Okay. And then Charmin said, I am not going to get ages on you. I'll leave you alone uh, with your years. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, 25 um, films are being submitted. There's 49 short films. And you get nominated in a category, your first time out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think um, having achieved that, there's going to be much of a problem of recouping money. I don't expect you to tell me how much it costs you to put this together. But is that something that you feel comfortable you will recoup, is my inquiry. Um, if I ever discuss it here, no, no, I want to ask you for your dollars and cents. No, but, <laughs> but do you think what you put out financially in this, since you oh, get oh, sorry, oh, yeah, initially, recoup, yeah. that you will recoup? Um, well, I mean, I think so over time. Um, I, I mean, I, I could be surprised in you know, and when we come to movie town, the festival, it might have a huge crowd and be like, okay, you release it in Cinema Eight or something, and yeah. we'll go watch it. So we we're really waiting to see the feedback and stuff, and and what we get. Uh, no, but I really, uh, yeah, I do believe that we'll, I mean, the budget was so microscopic. I really mm-hmm. think we'll get, <laughs> we'll, we will get it back um, in, over time. And, um, I, you know, we all kind of hoping, as anybody would, you know, you're doing film and the arts to be pleasantly surprised. Ah, yes. You're yeah. like, oh, okay, that was nice. We get back, yada, yada, uh, full gross back, get back the budget and everything. So, you know, fingers crossed. So where in Trinidad did you film? Where, where are your locations um, in Trinidad or Tobago? Or? We filmed... Um, uh, uh, we have scenes in the streets of um, like Tuna Puna. Um, we have um, uh, scenes in the Laragum Stadium, which was uh, one of my favorite um, scenes to shoot and places mm. to go. Um, Port of Spain, of course. Um, uh, um, we we got places like um, uh, the Ministry of um, I believe Works and um, Works and Transport, etc. They they really helped us out with like uh, we have scenes in lobbies and stuff like that. Uh, so I was really surprised about the support with locations. Um, but yeah, it, it, it doesn't have a whole lot. Yui, Yui as well. We did cheat a lot of things in Yui to look like on the streets, like in little car parks in Yui and stuff. And we the magic of movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, uh, I mean, if you watch it, it's, it, it's kind of like if you was to really zone into the locations, you would see how we, how we magic of movies, how we twist everything around. Mm-hmm. Like you would see he runs here and then he runs somewhere else. And it's like, wait, okay. That, so you're creating a different kind of a Trinidad a, sort yes. of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because I, I, as I was telling uh, some representatives from the festival yesterday, uh, um, I really wanted it to be, and I'm putting in the film now, I wasn't initially going to have any scene or anything to state it, but it was a fictional city. Mm. in Trinidad yeah. um, so, which I'm going to put it on kind of wrestling with what to call this fictional city but I, that's what I was thinking like it would be cool because when you see the film uh, I guess it could kind of get a vibe in the trailer um, what I really wanted to do was like m- more than a lot of things was to create like a, a sense of a, a world yeah, like a kind of eerie kind of world and I'm told it, it came across really well and um, you know w- when, when that was happening I started to realize okay like you know I really think that there should be a fictional city. So, uh, yeah. also too, uh, what I'm getting the impression is that you, so you, the, if you film in Tunapuna, the main road, the market, you're going to get an island finish. Oh, of course, yeah. So, w- so you took places in China and you engineered it and you got I, it I, to Yeah, that's exactly correct. Yeah, we, we chose places that kind of, because um, I was kind of miserable with the locations, you know, I wanted, I would tell everybody, um, like, let, let's try to pick places that, you know, we can't afford to build a set to mm-hmm. evoke the feeling mm-hmm. that we want. So let's at least look around and pick places that would kind of do that for us. So, you know, it, it would be, you know, all over looking for places and stuff. And, and you know, it, it was a lot of thinking in the decision processes of where we shot um, just to get that, that well, so to speak, that city, that fictional train, that city to look the way it does. I think, I think, Bish, that from listening to what Michael is saying, that's, that's the um, thing that came out here this morning and that you did not go in the traditional way to do either a reality thing which would mm-hmm. have shown it as it is or put up go around begging for sponsors to, so you can set up this big set and have this big dream <laughs> movie but you worked with what you had beautifully yeah. more so the technology to be able to create your fictional city yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it does have some some dig- digital effects in it too um but yeah so i mean and, and another good thing to it works really nice for the movie if it's if it's that fictional thing because when you see the film like i discussed the guy the, the main protagonist his name is ryan williams played by jovan brown really good actor by the way um 
he he doesn't the whole our whole tagline thing like on the poster as well is what is the truth because mm-hmm. he's so deluded now he's trying to figure this out and the audience is going with him so i think it would fit perfectly to just have a totally kind of you know a whole world he could get lost in you know you put together an action an uh, action sequence this is 72 minutes of action <laughs> is what is is what is um built to be uh music scores lalo shafrin a lot of these guys get their names lalo coming Sh- out of the no, music no. so talk about the music who did the music for this who uh, did the scores the, the music is done by um early talented a uh, guy named Dominic Andrews, mm-hmm. and um, you know we discussed the score. We 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 did references to to to, to different movies and stuff. And w- what we wanted to go for was something that would feel cold mm-hmm. and something that would kind of alienate the audience a little bit. So it, it has a, a kind of surreal kind of vibe to it. And we mm-hmm. really discussed that for a while, and you know went back and forth with with different um, movie soundtracks from different um, composers uh, and. Um, we tried to a, a, actually a big reference for us was um uh, David Fincher's Sorry. films, um the, his, the music in his films mm-hmm. and the look mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. like we was going for something like that where the music is not so much a, is more of a subtle underline than a big a feature. Dun, dun, as it dun, were. Dun, you know, as much as it looks mm-hmm. fantastical, we we didn't really we not really trying to do the whole big Hollywood dun, 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 and Batman and you know. Uh, one mean? of the things you find is so. that when they, when <laughs> when they do that, they find one exceptional singer to put in the in in, in, in you know in some part of the movie because a, a you're singer? hoping that the song itself will go out on its own and then yes. lead people back to the film. You know, that's that is that's actually so. that's actually we were actually trying to to get a like a song song mm-hmm. for the like maybe to play any credits Always or official to song. Do that, yes. it, yeah, but the time was so strapped and I was talking to um uh, some guys i know who are in a band and um we 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 had some it was going so good like he played stuff for man he, he, you know, he sent me recordings i was like yes i'm just the time that time just just vaporize on us so it's like mm. hopefully you know later on um the film festival is just really premiere so hopefully later on we'll right. get to you'll get to do that well your brother is rennie rennie you got a lot of work to do <laughs> <laughs> and they got a 14 plus rate um yeah age, yeah it's yeah. age rated it's rated 13, pg basically. 13 yeah. yeah 14 plus i see i'm seeing here and um did you mention too as well because you're coming um with a slew of other local films yes, some really good movies really good competition. movies are coming. <laughs> yeah, the competition is really good and it's, yeah. it's it reflects nicely on Trinidad and tobago there's um Bazadi, which everyone knows that features Marshall Montano, mm. which will premiere at Globe on Wednesday, 23rd September, which is all part of TNT Film Festival Week. Um, Sally's Way, director Joel G- Joanne Gale Johnson. Um, and there's Trafficked, Sean Hutchinson, Hutchinson's and Kim Johnson is back with another documentary. Feature, Repercussions, an African Odyssey about the steel, someone trying to set up a steel plan um, in Africa and our soul turned inside out, which is a look at traditional mass characters from Marianne Braley. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's at least six of the, the top notch films. Yeah. That's including Michael's um, Pendulum, which yeah, is, so. and they're all different. If you go to the TT Film Festival website or their Facebook page and you, you look at the trailers, you see they're all different. It is 20 minutes after uh, 11 o'clock, Michael. Rochford is our guest. We're talking about where are you hail from? Um, I was born in Arima. I grew up in Arima. Oh, yeah. Larry Gooms. Uh, uh. That explains Larry Gooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yes. the affinity uh, to shooting there. Who, who would you say um, you emulated, patterned yourself after as far as directors? Uh, I know you were writing your own stuff from young. I know you came up with your stories and all of that. But at some point when you say, I'm going to be serious about it, there was <laughs> yeah. some case study. There was somebody. Yes. Who would that be and why? Um, well, for me, it's a mixture of things. It, it is directors, and it is a lot of just standalone films as well. But mm-hmm. for the in, uh, the directors that influence me, of course, most people would say for Steven Spielberg, um, Orson Welles, mm-hmm. um, David Lean, um, who did Lawrence of Arabia, mm-hmm. which is insane. Um, that's a story, or that's a cinematography. <laughs> they took a lot of poetic licenses no, yeah, in that he, story. Yeah, yeah. A picture of the river, and the river choir was, was good, too. I, I like that one. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, I think I'm forgetting somebody. But, but yeah, those were the influences. And, and um, a, lot of, a lot of movies to kind of influence. Like, 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 so I guess it's like not really seeing a, a musician, but just talking about individual albums or something mm-hmm. like that, so, you know, mm-hmm. so to speak. So it's... It's a combination of things. Your, de- your debut is Thursday. Folks can go on, on online and book tickets. So they just do what uh, you know traditionally we did before, which is just to go on down to the movie mm-hmm. and, and pay and get inside. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Um, you, could, you could pre-order tickets, I believe, on the, on the Trans-Tobago Film Festival, I believe. 
Um, you could get the tickets there. Um, you could also go down to the box office in Movie Town. It's thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and get tickets there. Um, it, it may be going fast, so some people might want to go and pre-order those tickets. Yeah, for Thursday night, I, I wanted to go <laughs> yeah. really fast for you guys. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to see a full compliment. Uh, you know, full compliment of folks coming out because this is a very uh, important feature. I love your energy. Thank you. I, I, I love your energy and the fact that uh, you know, at twenty. <laughs> I can't even get my 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 my, 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 my words organized for twenty three, man. That's a great achievement. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. But can I go into your twenty three year old mind again? <laughs> your brilliant twenty three year old mind again. Brilliant. You got brilliant. Yeah, on yeah. Okay. Um, so lo- you said you cited Lawrence of Arabia and Virgin right. River Cry, um, mm-hmm. saying those were influences. Were those films that you in your search in your search that you came across or film folks told you about or? Were those things that you saw, were there films that you saw at home that your dad or your mom or somebody, mm-hmm. that's what I want to get at. Oh, yeah, that yeah, kind of like that. a little before you feel professional. Kind yeah, of like yeah. Honest, because amazing. there would have been something to kind yeah, of like yeah, in have middle an ground. interest. Yeah, yeah. Even though well, you, you might think, it, but you probably are born with it, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah, there were movies, um, you know, a lot of a- action movies, you know, we, we, we have really grew up watching like Starship Troopers and, mm. and Predator and, 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 you know, one or two Steven Spielberg movies, uh, big Indiana Jones fan. Those are the ones I guess when I was much younger. Yeah. Men in Black, definitely Men in Black. I would always say Men in Black. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like one of them, and Star Wars. Yeah, but I've like seen you wearing a, a Star Wars yeah, t-shirt. Star- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely Star Wars. Um, so yeah, those are the ones I grew up you would watch and, you know, just flip on the TV whenever something's showing and, and, and kind of take it in. Well, how did you get to Lawrence of Arabia and Virgin River? Lawrence of, those movies were around, around the past three years-ish. Th- those mm. movies kind of, you know, when you go into film school, um, I went to, okay. I did UTT before somewhere okay. in 09 film when I was school. like 18, 17, 18 around there, mm-hmm. like the most serious films. And I would see like Citizen Kane from Austin Wells and all that kind of stuff. And I'd be like, wow, you know? Yeah. So therefore you said the magic word there, UTT. <laughs> Your direct product yeah. of UTT. Uh, UTT and UE, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I tried to extract from you earlier when we started. But I, I don't know if you realize <laughs> yeah. we do a tag team here. If, yeah. if you get away at the top, somebody yeah, yeah, will yeah. get somebody you. Somebody will catch you. Let me too, because UTT is, uh, has been, yeah. you know, like really yeah. churning out a lot of good, yeah. a lot, a lot of good musicians and people and, mm-hmm. and film and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quietly, though, it's pretty much understated. The film school and all of that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 um, I went first to UTT to the animation program. And that's actually where I met um, the guy who's doing his sound in the movie. He was, he's also there doing his sound stuff. And then I finished that up and, and, and decided to, to go to UE. That was more or less the plan. Because I still do, I really love like um, illustration and animation and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say film is first and that is like very close second. Because I really I real like animation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that was the plan really. Just to, I went and do that first in UT. Then I, then I went into film and you know, I, I, would, I definitely still want to hang around animation as well. I want to see you make your money back. I want to see you make a lot of money. I want to see you continue filming. Um, so you say uh, you didn't put out a lot of money for this, but uh, you use the university's money. And That's how right. much of your own did you put in? Not in dollars and cents, but percentage of the. Um, um, well, how the system works is 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 a uh, they have a, a reimbursement kind of kind of program. So uh, we would put in, you know, we would all put up together and, mm-hmm. and, and do our best to make up, and then they would reimburse you up to that amount. Mm-hmm. So that's really how it worked. But um, um, I can't really see percentages. I don't know. All right, you it's, can it's stop. A while ago, it's a while ago. From I'm trying from, to make a nice bleeding yeah. heart story so everybody can come <laughs> out and support the thing, and then realize how fabulous it is, <laughs> yeah. and then spread the uh, word. Uh, I'm sitting up, brother. I'm sitting up. A Rocky up. story. You know, yeah. Okay, yeah <laughs> you know. They, they love Rocky stories. That's why people <laughs> go to the movies. It's not that because it's going to be their life, but it's going to be an escape. But yeah, yeah, again, definitely. congratulations on this. This is a wonderful thing. If you had to pass on advice to like minds um, and energetic new uh, filmmakers, folks who are playing around with their cameras, now give out the best advice to them as they listen to you this as, morning. As we would, you have one right there listening to you most. In, as the most, Akil is our, <laughs> yes. yes, he works out with the department as the most intent that he's listened to any one of the programs that he's been recording here for us for several months so what would you tell him go ahead give you (laughs) Um, (laughs) filmmaking um well i would say yeah well you have to have you know yeah yeah the pussy phase a lot of work and you have to really trust yourself that you could that you could tell the story on your screen and really work on your craft that's what i would say i mean i'm still very young so Mm -hmm. um so i'm learning too um but that's that's the only thing i could pass on like at this point in time i would say like what i learned is pussy phase it's plenty of work and you have to really work on your ability to, to, to get your story across and, and believe in, in the vision that you have that it would translate on the screen. 
Mm. Well, Thursday, I'm going to be down there. And I urge all our listeners to be down there. This is Thursday at the uh, Movie Town. 72 minutes of action is what we are anticipating. <laughs> it is, uh, I, I know your modesty is stopping you every time I say action. You think about well, yeah, it's, well, it's a lot so of things. Of it's a lot of things. Oh, um, you, you got some love scenes in there, of course, too, right? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Did I strike a nerve? What about the love scene? Is there a love scene in there? The weapons love. Um, mm. but yeah, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a mixture of things. It's, you know, it's a lot of suspense, too. It's a lot of... Uh, I would say it's more like a thinking to his right, action movie because right. uh, when you watch it, you're gonna definitely be because one of the things I went for, and uh, one of the earlier questions mm-hmm. I didn't think I, I put a heavy enough stamp on was mm-hmm. um, I wanted to to when like when I pitched the idea to to the rest of the, of the, of the folks who worked on the film, I was like, you know, I want to do something where that's when the name Pendulum came out, which was just a working title to to put the audience in an experience where you're watching the movie. And because the protagonist is not even clear, mm-hmm. you trying to figure out what's Emotions, going on. Yes, yeah. Yes, so yes, I, I like mm-hmm. I like the fact that you know as trainees too, we like to shout at the screen and be like, he gonna do this and this and that and that. <laughs> so basically the whole the whole movie, like everything about it, is just like I want you to do that. Mm-hmm. And then when everything just switch over, let's well swing to the other side, so, so to speak, then it's like, wait. Yeah, you because know? that's how great movies are made. Yeah. The predictable ones, you get to the middle of the of the show and you can tell what's gonna happen yeah. with. Yeah, so it, it, it actually tries to make you, like, we set things up. I, I wouldn't want to spoil that, but we, but we put yes. things in a way, you know, where you'll be thinking a lot. I'll just say it like that. You'll you be thinking a lot. And that's why I was lot. amazed, because I thought earlier when I asked you for your influences, yeah. I would have heard uh, one of the people, um, or one of the movies that influenced you would have been Matrix. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, wow. Going like, yeah, I watch Matrix. What are you talking I, it's, about it's, here? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard. To, sometimes, you know, my mind is just go empty, like, and, uh, it shows like this. But I watch Matrix for, like, I, you can ask me about it right like, about yeah. 500 times. So, and, no, uh, you have to stand in line. I think I could have been there. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can't believe I forgot that though. Yeah, big, big, big influence. Definitely mm-hmm. Matrix. Mm-hmm. Definitely the Matrix. Well, a man, uh, uh, again, uh, wishing you all the luck. Thank you very much. All the luck in the world. I am I am encouraged with your energy and clearly your your, your talent here. Thank you. Good luck. I'll see you on Thursday, okay? All right, man. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Have yourself a wonderful day.